Our first speaker is Rena Rovanelli. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Woo! She has lived in Sudbury, Montreal, Vancouver, San Francisco, New York, Detroit, and Jamaica, but maintains there is nowhere like home sweet home Toronto. Clearly a creature of habit, she has eaten parmesan, garlic triscuits, green grapes, and jalapeno Havarti cheese every single night for dinner for the last year and a half. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And her greatest achievement to date is reaching level 400 in Candy Crush. So help me in welcoming our Candy Crush queen to the stage, Rena Rovanelli. <laughs> Okay, quick disclaimer. There are some pictures here that are a lot more ample and voluptuous than I am right now. And I would never in a million years show those, but as I cannot rewrite history, shit's about to get real. <sighs> Rock bottom is a beautiful start. And I tried to think where I was gonna start my story. And I'm gonna start it at my rock bottom moment. I'm 30 years old. I have a new baby, she's a preemie. I'm a single mom. No money, no prospects, my life is horrible. I've just come through a really, really dark chapter of my life, which is for a whole other episode. I'm standing in a welfare office with a tear rolling down my face, and I'm thinking, what's gonna happen to my life? I get into a program called MicroSkills. It's a self-employment program. I'm the star of the class. I create plus size planet. Now I'm always a professional when it comes to niche marketing or branding. Okay, her boobs are huge, but you can see <laughs> because the world is round, not flat. That's very clever. <laughs> Look at all the happy, chubby women down there. I created events for big women in a nightclub setting and on my opening night, people thought there was gonna be 12 people. No, there was 200 people. The place was packed, the newspapers were there, there was nothing like that in, in Toronto, and I rocked that. Now I did that for a couple years. I actually won an award from MicroSkills Entrepreneur of the Year, and I thought, I am amazing at this. <laughs> now, necessity breeds invention, and you have to imagine as a plus size woman, at least five or six or seven women would show up to the club in the same top. So I thought, I'm gonna create a clothing store and I'm gonna sell club wear. Now I started by bringing my rolling racks to the events, then I used that money to put it back into opening a clothing store. And I started my first store in Toronto. We opened the second store in Woodbridge. I had an online clothing line. We had an amazing business on our second year. of We did 700K in sales. Now this is with maybe 10K investment. That was really impressive at the time. And we ended up having this exciting moment. Whoa, we're on the dragon's den. <laughs> now this is an exciting moment because I love public speaking and I thought I was gonna walk in there and kill it. And I walk in, I know my business, I'm about to kill it. I walk up and I'm talking like this, I can't get my words, I'm so nervous, I'm, t I'm terrified. But finally the nerves subside and I just sell it like it's my life. By the end, we asked for 250K for 30% of our business. In the very end, they offered 250K, but for 50%. Now, I had a partner, and I promised her that we wouldn't give up half our business. In fact, I said, listen, we're just going on here for marketing. And they aired that 15 times. They did a follow-up episode, which they aired 15 times. It was amazing. We didn't take the deal. We got a standing ovation at CBC. The dragons were hugging us. They thought we were superstars. And they did a follow-up episode with the dragons where they said, who would you pick as the best pitch of the season amongst those who didn't take deals? And they picked us. OK, now we get to our fuck ups. <laughs> because very, very shortly after, we think we're queens. We're like rolling big in our two stores. The winter comes and the recession comes, 2008, 2009. And recession brings retail to its knees. Now we cannot survive. We're bringing dresses from one store to the next. We're sending, client, we're sending our customers up to Woodbridge. We can't fulfill our orders. We have no money. And we're hanging on and we're hanging on. Now I don't think that the recession is something we can control. But I, looking back, I think that was a fuck up for us because 
In the very end, we couldn't have anticipated what would have happened, but how valuable would it have been to work with the dragons? They may have gotten us through that, but forget it. We may have died anyway in retail with the dragons, but imagine what we would have learned. Imagine the contacts we would have had. Imagine the next great idea that we had. We could have went to them. So I definitely, I think that that was a screw up. My second fuck up, not having a contingency plan. I have two years, I'm rolling big. I have so much cash, I'm just shoving it in my purse. It's <laughs> falling out. My daughter, we're going to Chuck E. Cheese, we're at the movies, we're shopping, we're like queens, we're like flying all over to Cuba. It's just falling on the ground. When this hits, I don't have a penny. Like, I'm hanging on for dear life. I never had a force, the foresight to maybe put a few bucks away or come up with plan B. And my biggest fuck up, I believe, was not knowing when to cut my losses. I hung on to that store for four brutal, painful years. Chubby women are bitchy. They were in there, they hated the clothes, they didn't want to pay 50 bucks for a top, it was brutal. I was hanging on for dear life. I really, really, really wish I would have walked away, but the reason I didn't was fear. Now, fear because my identity was that business. I was maximum woman, and that whole success was who I was. If I walked away from that, I was a failure, so I was hanging on for dear life. So I came up with the idea I was gonna rebrand. Again, look at my clever logo. Look at that gorgeous, voluptuous woman. Put it right on the wall. Got rid of my partner, she did nothing for seven years. <laughs> Got into just formal wear, high-end formal wear. Hung on for another brutal year or two until I finally couldn't take it and I just let go. And I thought, okay, let's try something different. Now, I had been to Jamaica several times. And I realized all the tourists were always dying for their ice cap, and they didn't have it. I create this gorgeous logo, flyers, menu board. I can't cook at all. I have zero interest in the food service bin business. I have zero domestic abilities, but somehow I thought I was gonna go down there because it was a great idea. I take everything, I fly to Jamaica. <laughs> my, first, my first great idea, I'm gonna be at the airport in a kiosk, but there is somebody who has a stranglehold on the food and beverage industry in the airport. Then I find that gorgeous location. It's on the strip, I really desperately want it, but I'm waiting for Jamaican real estate agents. It's taking months back and forth. They can't do it, she's out of town, she changes her mind. I'm married to that man, just drives me crazy. Horrible, grumpy, miserable, terrible. Every day of my life's horrible. <laughs> and so I say, why am I doing this? Now, I have some lessons. That's my fuck up. Here's my number one lesson. It might be a great business, but it might not be a great business for you. So now, this was a great business idea, and after I cut my losses and came home, a friend of mine said six months later, somebody opened an ice cap shop on the strip. So busy, there's people lined up, he had to expand. It was just not for me. I, I would have not been happy. And again, another important thing for me was cutting my losses. I'm in Jamaica, my daughter's in private school, I hate my life, it's hot as hell, people are aggressive, it's horrible. You know Happy, it's horrible. <laughs> the guy's driving me crazy, he's gorgeous, but he's driving me crazy. So finally I say, fuck it, I'm going home. Which is dealt with my fuck ups. Oh and now where am I? Now I'm, starting Speaker Slam with my partner, speakerslam.ca. Now, this is my new passion, and we're running an amazing inspirational speaking contest once a month, and I'm following my passion. So I'm hoping that next year I'm not gonna be here to share any other fuck-ups, <laughs> uh, so wish me luck with that. Thank you. Yeah.